Hello everyone, welcome to the other episode of Serverless Zero to Hero. Okay, so I was surprising at one point I would say Serverless Hero to Zero. Okay, if I say so, no, we are going to learn Serverless from Zero to Hero. You don't need to know anything about Serverless, but I'm going to make you as a hero on the Serverless world, right? So for that, you need to make sure you watch this video from beginning to end. So not jumping here and there, right? And also make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet. And also uh, make sure you share these videos on your social media so you can um, grab more people to watch this content. Okay. And also stay in uh, touch with my Instagram and Facebook pages and I'll put the uh, links below. And uh, so I will uh, respond to your direct messages and support queries and anything uh, for seven to 10 days uh, of this video published, right? So then uh, we will go with, I'm still going to support on the comments, but I may not read the uh, comments frequently because uh, I need to uh, spend more time to uh, uh, reply to the new videos, okay? So in the last video, we learned uh, how to create a Lambda function and also we created our very first Lambda function, right? So one video before that we learned about API gateway and we created our very first API, right? So there we learn what is the difference uh, between creating an API and creating a your stack, right? So API is a kind of an interface or a gate. So where external people come and consume your um, functions, right? So now, uh, what I'm going to do today, the function we created, the Lambda function we created, we are going to expose through the API gateway to outside the world, right? So now then other people can access it. So just assume uh, you are in a secure premises, right? So you have a single gate, other people to come in. So now some other visitor come to meet you. So whoever the security person, uh, on the gate will ask where are you going who are you uh, and so many things right he trying to understand and identify the person come in and what is his purpose so api gateway also has the security features right so it has authentication it can do the authorization it can do all the things right so it can go with the cognito or iam base or a custom authorizer you can do so, so many things but this video this particular video scope is i'm going to keep this api open right so that means we are not going to secure this api okay because this kind of a demo purposes um so what we are going to do okay let's let's go to the uh, api gateway as well so here we have the api gateway and there we should have the first api we created okay okay so yeah you have hello so without creating a new API, I'm going to show you how to uh, connect this API itself into the Lambda, right? So if you go to uh, this uh, API this moment, right? So you have here, so let's deploy and see what is the current output. So I'm going to deploy into the dev stage. Okay, so here your uh, API URL. Right, so it's a uh, response version 2, right? So now what we are going to do is we go back to this API, right? We go back to this API and here, um, let's go to this get method. So now you have this request and the response, how this cycle goes. Here you can see it's a mock endpoint, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this get uh, response here, get one and change this integration request. Right now it's a mock, right? So last time we created as a mock. So now we are going to create as a Lambda function. Okay. So here you have a very, very important concept to understand. Okay. So there are two ways you can integrate API gateway to the Lambda. One is as a lambda function second one is as a lambda proxy okay this is very different uh, in these two okay so let me explain you so okay so let's say this is your api gateway okay so this is your api gateway so now and this is your lambda okay so this is your api gateway and this is your lambda 
So now what happened? If you use the lambda integration, the request come here. Okay, let me get the request as well. So now request comes here. This API gateway in the lambda function mode, API gateway can access the request, right? So that means API gateway can do anything to the request. It can validate the headers, it can read the body, header, validate it, or um, like if you have a first name and last name separately the request, you can make as a full name, it can, it can manipulate it and hand over to the function. So when the function give the response back, the API gateway now also can manipulate the response as well, right? So that means uh, API gateway has a fully control over request and response. For example, in the response, if you're sending uh, full name or uh, it can split it back to first name and last name and respond it back to the uh, caller, right? But the lambda proxy mode, right? In the lambda proxy mode, what happens is whatever the request comes is directly go through the API gateway, but API gateway do not modify it. API gateway cannot use to modify the request or the response, right? So the main difference you need to keep in mind when you use the API gateway as a proxy, whatever the headers, whatever the, everything the caller should get, you need to make sure you return from the your lambda function itself, right? For example, in future, we are going to talk about the cause, cross-origin resource sharing. On the cause, you need to send certain accept headers, right? So without accept headers, your browser will not let to uh, send the traffic to your APIs, right? So accept uh, origin, accept uh, methods, and accept uh, headers, you need to send those. So those headers, you need to make sure you send from the uh, API itself and the response codes and everything must send through the API. But if you integrating with the uh, AP uh, Lambda mode, Lambda function mode, not the Lambda proxy mode, so you can configure those things within the API gateway itself. So what is good? There is no hard and fast answer for that. But I prefer Lambda proxy mode because my logics and my controls, my code, then everything lying with the lambda, right? But if I do a lambda function mode, certain uh, codes in the API gateway, some other codes in the lambda, it's kind of a mix. But there may be cases I might uh, need lambda function itself, not the lambda proxy, especially go with the uh, let, uh, legacy system integration, but as much as I can, I prefer go with the uh, Lambda proxy, but it comes with a certain cost itself as well because you need to take care of everything. Then someone might say, okay, uh, but your response code, the headers and everything will clutter your uh, code, Lambda code, but I can use module, okay, or layers, okay. So no matter what it is, so it's either way, uh, functionality uh, almost same, okay. So here, this one I'm going to use as a Lambda proxy integration, so I just make this take. So Lambda region is my, uh, one is a uh, US East one, right? So if you're in a different region, you need to make sure you select that. So, I mean, uh, not the region you are in, uh, but is the region you created your Lambda, okay? So I'm going to say, uh, use default timeout, I'm going to save this, right? So it will say, okay, my previous one will be, uh, so you are about to give the permission because uh, you need to have a Lambda permission, Lambda invoke permission to the API gateway. So I ask, okay, go ahead and uh, get that permission as well. Okay. So now I'm good with this. So I'm going to deploy this. Okay. So I'm going to deploy this and deploy to what? So without refreshing the previous one, I purposely going to uh, get this to a new browser to show you the difference. Okay. So now, again, you got this problem. So let's say welcome. Uh, still, it's, uh, oh. still it's used the uh, previous uh, or cached one. So now you got this, right? So hello from serverless lambda. Oops, so there's a spelling mistake. Don't worry about it. And this one. So now I'm going to change this, right? So you can see uh, when I refresh this, it, it uh, refresh the time, 
right so if you see here whenever I refresh it refresh the type okay so now see this one okay so now the last time we did change to the API gateway we had to redeploy it so what I'm going to do here I'm going to go to my lambda again right so I'm going to go my lambda again and I'm going to change this a little bit okay I had a spelling mistake I'm going to fix that okay here uh, and I'm going to add say version 2 with customize okay right so I changed the um, message a little bit so I'm going to deploy this again okay right so deployment successfully saved so this is the message I was getting so far so I'm going to take this into new window and now I'm going to uh, call go there, right? So you can see here the message change, the customize on version 2 with the customize. This is the previous one. So now you get the new message. I did not deploy or redeploy the API, right? I don't have to because I did not change anything in the API. What I did change is the uh, Lambda and I changed that. So again, so this is your Lambda. So this is your API gateway, right? So you change the Lambda, you don't need to redeploy the API. But if you do change something to the API, you must redeploy in order to take it effect, right? So that's it for this video, okay? So we'll see you in the next video um, very soon. And make sure you like, comment, and send if you have any question. Stay in touch in Instagram and the Facebook page, not the personal account, Facebook page, and share this video. That's all I have to say. Stay safe. Take care.